Welcome to the first tutorial of Slenderman. This is part one, and hopefully I'll be able to wrap this up by part five. So first thing that we're going to do is delete our first sprite, so the cat here. Then I'm going to make my way to our background or our stage, and simply edit the color and make it a dark green. Now, pretty much all of the sprites are already done. All I have to do is just simply import them. Now, if you guys want the same sprites, or if you want something to reference to when you are making the sprites, you can uh, easily download this file at Mediafire and I'll have a link in the description below. Okay, I have all of my sprites laid out. And now we can begin. So, let's go ahead and start by start with our player here. This is going to be done similar to or exactly like the Nazi zombies from a bird's eye view. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to actually design two variables. This one, this uh, first variable will be scroll X for all sprites, press OK. And then the next one will be scroll Y for all sprites. And if you have, and if you have done any side scrollers, at all, then you'll know what these are used for. Right, then we'll go into control, pull out when flag is clicked, uh, when flag is clicked, set Y, and then set X. I'm gonna go to our variables, pull out these. Gonna go to operators and we'll get plus and times for multiplication. Duplicate it. You want to place scroll Y in one of them and scroll X in the other one. Then type 480 in the center on both of them. Then place 0 in the last slot. Then just simply put scroll Y to Y, scroll X to X. Now before we hook this in here, we'll go back to our variables and we'll pull out set scroll X to 0 and we need set scroll Y to 0. Okay, and then right after that, we'll set, we'll go to looks, pull out, set, brightness to negative 20. And then we'll add all the movement in one second. You want to go to, when flag is clicked, forever, go to motion. And we want our player to always point towards our mouse pointer. Now we can add in all the movement. Go to control when the flag is clicked, pull out a forever loop, and pull out about four if statements. Then go to uh, sensing key space. When the key space is pressed, go ahead and duplicate this four times to a total of four. Place them in the slots of the if statements, and then whatever feels more comfortable for you, either the arrow keys or S W A and D. Let's go ahead and place it in there. So I'm going to do A, D, 
W and S. Now what this does here is, so when the game starts, the forever loop will cause it to go forever, and it will not stop. So it will repeat all of these actions. But it will repeat these actions only, and if only, a certain key is pressed. So if a key is pressed, then it will perform that action. Now what those actions are, are going to be the character's motion. So we're going to go to motion, pull out, change x, by, change y by 10, and then change x by 10. Duplicate them both. And we don't want our character to be that fast, so we'll bring it down to about, turn all of them to about 3. Then you want to take one of the x and place a negative in front of it. So it becomes a negative 3. Same with the y. Then we'll place our positive y in the w slot, our positive x in the d slot, negative x in a, and then negative y in s. There we go. So let's go ahead and I'll hide all of these sprites for the time being. just so we can get a look on how things are. So when I run this, as we can see, our character moves around. He always points towards our mouse. Okay, so on our light, we, uh, we just need to add a, nothing too, too overcomplicated. Something, uh, I don't know, kind of simple. So we're going to go to when the flag is clicked, and now we're going to go back to looks, set, ghost, to 35. Then beneath that, we'll have a forever loop. Motion, go to... We also want it to point towards. Now it's going to go to our player, and then it will point towards mouse pointer. And then what Ghost does is it simply makes this transparent. So right now, it's not. It uh, it over it covers up other sprites. So when I activate this, you can see it becomes uh, see through or transparent. And if it's uh and if it's above our uh our player here, just simply take your mouse pointer, hover over the player, click it, and drag him above it. So when we start it again, you'll see that it actually looks like it's going out of the flashlight. Now if it doesn't look like this, and if it's way off to the side or something, simply go to the costume itself, edit it you'll need to adjust the set the center you need to adjust that so mine's perf mine's set at a uh, at a good spot right now so it doesn't appear to have any trouble or anything All right there we go All right then we'll move on to slenderman So, very simple. Um, when flag is clicked, we'll go ahead and have a forever loop, and then an if-else statement. Within this if-else statement, we'll have if touching light. So if touching the beam of the flashlight, I want the brightness. So we're going to go to looks, set, scroll down to brightness and we want the brightness at 25 and that's it then in the else part 
we'll set our brightness to distance times one. This will be distance to player. Okay, and that's all that we'll have for Slenderman for right now. Oh, and one more thing. Forever... So we want the Slenderman to forever point towards player. Then we'll move on to our static. It should just be one sprite with many costumes. So we're going to go to when flag is clicked, forever. Okay. Before I uh, go any further, I'm just going to go ahead and change this to static. So, and this will be the static. So, when we go a certain distance or we get close enough to Slender Man, then I want the, uh, the static to start to appear. But I don't want it to pop up. I want to kind of ease in and just kind of fade in and then fade out if we start moving away toward away from Slenderman. So uh what I'll do is I'll constantly have the the costume switching. So I'm gonna change all these white one seconds to one or to zero point zero one instead of just doing it to all of them I can just duplicate them to where I have three and then go to Lux and we'll have it at S1 our S2 and then our S3 alright there we go And then separate or away from this, I want it to be when the flag is clicked forever. And we'll make a new variable. This variable will be called fuzz. And go to looks, set ghost to our new variable fuzz. Now that we have this, we can go back to Slenderman, and we'll add in the uh, the key code that activates the fuzz. We'll be set fuzz to. We're gonna go to operators times distance to player. It'll be times negative 0 0.8. Place that right there. Click check through everything. Okay, now let's go ahead and run this and see how it looks. Okay. I forgot to uh to show the static. So now let's go ahead and try this. Alright, so the closer we get to Slenderman, the heavier the static becomes. And the reason why Slenderman is turning white every time I go farther away from them is simply because we forgot to add the negative right here. 
So just simply make sure it's a negative one. So it's distance to player times negative one to uh, to get that effect. So now when we run this, closer we get the Slenderman, the lighter he becomes, and then when we have our flashlight on him, his brightness is instantly turned up. So when the light shines on him, you know, he gets brighter. Okay, I hope you guys, or I hope uh, you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Um, it's I know it's kind of rocky for it being the first one, but just uh, stick with me, and hopefully we'll come out with a uh, a pretty fun and enjoyable Slenderman game. Thanks for watching.